Hello, everyone. Happy Tuesday. I'm Jeremy. I'm Alan. And you are officially tuned in to the GG Dispatch. Each week on Tuesday, bright and early, we consolidate the week's biggest headlines and gaming news. Whether you're listening in on your commute, during your workout, or you just have us on in the background, we thank you for listening in. Speaking of thanks, another thank you to the kind folks at Audio-Technica for providing the microphones that both Alan and I are using, the AT2020 USB-X. Whether you're just starting out on your content creator journey or you're a seasoned pro, Audio-Technica has the products for you. All right. We are into February already. I cannot believe it. Like <laughs> January has come and gone. Longest year ever. Uh that of January 2024. Um and there's some pretty crazy news, but before we get to that, uh I I did not get the the game time in GTA 5 that I was hoping to. So For shame, Jeremy. I For know. Shame. I will I will I will have to I'll play catch up. I'll I'll do double time this coming week to to play through some additional missions, but I understand Alan uh, you're you're properly hooked again, is that right? <laughs> yeah, I'm just like, okay, let me play like two missions cuz I didn't want to, you know, I'm trying to keep us as in, as in sync as possible, but like I just wanted to keep playing. I'm like, oh god, I want to just keep going. So instead of kind of continuing on with the missions, I just did all the extra side missions so they call strangers and freaks that's kind of like what they've like the name that they've given them uh, i've driven around just to kind of drive around because i just i like the feeling of, of all the different cars that they have uh but yeah like instead of playing final fantasy remake i've just been playing gta 5 well you you are due to uh get through your ff7 homework and i will do my gta 5 homework so that'll be the trade-off true true yes all right um uh, we've got uh Four, well, it's kind of hard to count the number of stories because we have a lot of stories and we also have like just one really big story. <laughs> so our first story is the PlayStation State of Play. Um, there were several games shown off, uh, including Death Stranding 2, On the Beach, Silent Hill 2 Remake, Rise of the Ronin, Stellar Blade, Dragon's Dogma 2, Judas, Metro Awakening, VR, um, and a ton more. I'm curious, uh, from your perspective, Alan, what was the game that maybe you went into it being really excited about? Did it deliver on the hype? And then maybe on the back end of the state of play, was there a game that really piqued your interest and you were like, oh, I was not expecting that? Uh, yeah. First off, Death Stranding 2 on the beach. Wow. What a trailer. What madness. Yeah. Like, I haven't even played the first one. It's in my backlog. But now I'm like, I got to play the first one because I want to be ready for the second one because that trailer was completely unhinged in the best way possible. It's why I love Hideo Kojima. And like, I'm just insanely hyped. You know, I came into it with no hype. I was kind of like, oh, okay, Death Stranding, cool. You know, you're walking around, beautiful vistas, you know, no big deal. But like the story in this, the characters, the voice acting, like he's just hitting all cylinders, man. It, it, not even the voice acting, like the acting. Like Troy Baker is in this game, you know, like that is that is him. A guitar that fires lightning. Yes, yes. Um, I I don't want to get I, I don't want to dig into De Death Stranding 2 just yet. I, I do want to have a larger conversation about this, specifically about Hideo Kojima. But um, just kind of circling back to uh, the the earlier some of the other um, games that they they showed off. Um, going into it, you know, I think there was a lot of hype around Stellar Blade. I was not impressed with the with the presentation of Stellar Blade. I don't know what what were your thoughts, Alan? I feel like this is the equivalent of like so. Pal World is to Pokemon what Stellar Blade is to uh, Near Automata. Like this looks like such a bad Near Automata knockoff that it's like okay. I, I I guess like you know if you're the, a fan of that gameplay, you're probably a little more excited. But like, are they going to be able to nail it the same way that the developer in the, of Nier does? Because like they're like noted for just having crazy smooth gameplay, right? And these devs, I I, I think this is their first game, um. So I just don't know. Like they've got some style to it, but I don't know the substance if it's actually going to be fun to actually play. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm still, I mean, I'm still optimistic. I'm still hopeful that the game, the actual gameplay, will be smooth. It'll be fun. But the way that they like introduced you to the world, the narrator over the trailer, it just. And the crazy thing was, it was weird. It was weird. It it was. It was weird, and like the music was good. Like the music was cool, and like the world seemed interesting. But then the sort of like vacation brochure, you know, like. (laughs) <laughs> or hotel TV narrator background voice was like, you know, and, and no disrespect if for whatever reason, the person who narrated that trailer is listening to this, but like, I just think the overall d- decision and on the you know presentation of it did not do the game a lot of favors. And so I was kind of bummed by that. Um, I was hoping to, to leave it with a bit more hype. Uh, however, I was really excited to see rise of the Ronin. I thought, um rise of the ronin had some had some cool uh like gameplay elements going on it kind of scratches that ghost of tsushima itch for me there were a couple of like graphical concerns like a couple i was gonna of say like that there, game there, looked yeah. way more rough than i thought it would considering like how much hype that's going into it yeah and and how close it is i mean like it's it's fairly close to release also but like i want to again be optimistic given the benefit of the doubt in terms of the uh, in terms of the visuals but like yeah i think that would probably be the one thing i was like somewhat surprised by was it it still seemed pretty rough around the edges from a visual perspective but you know the hopefully the the environments the the combat the you know the other elements will will help to make up for that and also the visuals would get polished before um before i was also surprised that like sony threw a bone to their playstation vr2 owners like it feels like they just kind of just left that thing to die out there. Um, so I'm happy that people who bought that device will get, like, it looks like a really good experience, a fun one. Um, uh, and they'll be able to get something, you know, nice for themselves to be able to play on this, you know, like $500 thing that they bought. It was like last yeah. Year. Yeah. Yeah. Like so the Metro Awakening VR and, and the Silent Hill, you know, game and, and everything else, the short message and all that good stuff. Um, I, I mean, I haven't really gotten into VR myself. Uh, I did a little bit of testing of it at the CES like years ago, and it like kind of made me dizzy and and uh, <laughs> a little bit like motion sick. But um, I'm hoping that that folks, like you said, that that have the PSVR and that enjoy that experience have some have some new titles to look forward to as well. Um, Dragon's Dogma Two, of course, it's coming very soon. It's like a month away, uh, so really cool to see you know get some more hype built up around that. Uh, I think that's definitely going to be a game that folks will be spending a lot of time with. Um, I mean, if they pull themselves away from FF7 Rebirth anyways. And and then and then Judas, like this one was really interesting. So um, Ken Levine, you know, basically, you know, kind of stepping away from from Bioshock to make another Bioshock uh, in the form Judas, of Judas. Like, the Bioshock vibes on this thing is like oh, yeah. up to 11. Except, like, they didn't say too much about this story, but it kind of feels like... Like, it feels like he's always trying to get some sort of, like, message across in his games that means something. Um, yeah, yeah. Whether or not he fully, like, gets there is another story entirely. But, like, this one feels kind of like maybe it might speak towards, like, the social media era that we're in. Yeah, it's like a police state type. Or, or like, everyone sort of, like, gets bonus points for, like, reporting folks who like break rules and break the law and there's a sort of element of like public ridicule and shame and that sort of thing and so it's it's really interesting um definitely got some serious you know bioshock vibes uh, off of the trailer in the combat and the in the aesthetic and the setting um you know the dialogue all that good stuff so uh you know excited for it fans of bioshock i think also are are pretty excited about it um yeah like that feels like bioshock 4 like let's be real here (laughs) yeah yeah so pretty cool to see that um but yeah then you know really the the closer the 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 final round here with uh, hideo kojima um really knocked this data play out of the park i think and and really helped to escalate it from like a b like a c plus b minus to like solid a territory for me um and so we got a nine minute plus trailer for death stranding two, like nine and a half minutes i think and it's just 
beautiful. I mean, it's, it's like you said, like there's the vistas, there's the, you know, just it's these, cinema. It's cinema. Yeah. It's cinema. And, um, you know, I, I've, I spent a bit of time kind of thinking about this and chatting with some other folks about like, there are very few creative minds in gaming like Hideo Kojima. Like he, he has a, he is very committed to his vision and he's able to execute on that vision. He has, you know, the benefit of, of helping to kickstart, you know, one of the most you know iconic franchises out there with Metal Gear Solid, right? And of course, like Zone of the Enders, which I don't think gets enough love. Um, and you know, so so he has these like sort of experiences, and you know, that's earned him the ability to create this studio and to have the creative freedom that he has, and to make the partnerships and the and the collaborations that he's had, like in Hollywood with celebrities and things like that. And the result is his ability to create, like you said, like cinema, right? Like these games that really elevate the, elevate the form of, of, of video games as an art. And so um, it's odd, like it's super weird, like just like the original Death Stranding, like elements of the, of the trailer, like when the baby was like in the fallopian tubes and like, or in the birth canal or whatever, and then like opens his mouth and like a ship comes out of it. And you're just like, what the hell's happening? Um, and, you know, you know, Troy Baker with the electric guitar battling like a cyborg that's, you know, has the baby laughing noises coming out of it. And just all of these crazy fever dream things that at the same time, you can finish watching that trailer and be like, yeah, Kojima, I trust you. Like, <laughs> I trust you to take me through this journey of whatever the hell is going on. And it's going to be a crazy ride. So, um just absolute absolutely hype like what a cool trailer what an awesome introduction to um his upcoming project and i just i was just totally blown away by it what i like about kojima is that like he's really good at iterating like when you go back to the metal gear series like every game built upon what he did on the last one but still kind of feel fresh in you and you get that again here like it's death straining like you can it's those characters it's that same style it but it still felt something like completely out of left field and new and fresh. Yeah. That's where I think that he, that's where he really excels is like constantly pushing the boundaries, the limits of what he does with these characters and his worlds that he's building. Mm -hmm. Um, And again, I think it's to be an awesome game. Like I, even I haven't even played the first one. Like this looks insane. So I'm going to, uh, once I get a little more time, hopefully after rebirth, and get a little bit of time to go back. Yeah. Well, we play. have about a year, so you know, you, you yeah, have that too. To that too. Up. Yeah. 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 So I, I, but for sure, this Death Stranding now one has kind of gone to the top of the backlog pile uh, mm -hmm. after Rebirth, for sure. Nice. Nice. Um. So. So yeah, that was uh, obviously a big, a big part of the the show. Um. But then even beyond that, uh, was the announcement that. Kojima is working on a new tactical espionage game in the same vein yeah, as Metal Gear Solid. Um, call, uh, the current uh, code name is Fizzint, which a few fo folks have pointed out, like you could rearrange the letters to spell out spy hint. Um, I don't know if, <laughs> if that's anything. Yeah, uh, this is, this is like classic internet. Let me go like, yeah every frame or is every... it like physical you know like physical intelligence or like you know yeah, it, it yeah, could be yeah. any 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 number of things that he's alluding to here but um you know some some folks said he just announced the first playstation 6 title like the i agree 100 you know? like they're still working on death training 2 and like back, they just said 2025 you don't even know when it's gonna come out it could come out of fall so they continue working all the way through 2025 on that game assuming there's no delays which we all know like is really common these days so yeah like they could maybe probably start like prototyping and like discussing what this game even is like in 2026 and with development yeah. cycles as long as they are like this could probably not even a launch title for the ps6 maybe a year or two after launch yeah and that's well <clears throat> that's where i'm kind of thinking like i don't i feel like kojima has been working on this already so i don't think that they're starting from ground zero um uh, MGS pun there. Uh, I don't think they're starting from ground zero, uh, but 
um, yeah, I do think it's going to take them a little bit of time. That's why I'm kind of up in the air whether or not, you know, do I think it's a PlayStation 6 launch title with a tentative PS6 launch? You know, again, just kind of looking at, you know, standard generational cycles, et cetera, right? You know, the the PS5 launched in uh, 2020 um, and they last around seven to eight years, right? So, you know, right, right around there. So 2027, give or take, uh, we'll probably be looking at some new hardware, maybe maybe they'll have something by then again kojima is the kind of person that you know he could do something similar as he did with death stranding as well where it's like maybe he has this like larger vision or project and he knows he's going to have it built out into sections and so maybe he has like fizzant you know chapter one and that is a launch title because they won't have as much to do and then they'll either do dlc or uh, an iterative release like two or three years down the road when they have a bit more of a grasp on the hardware, what the, the PS6 can do, et cetera. So I don't know. Lots of possibilities. Still a ways out. But just yeah, I think it was just cool just to like get it out there. I think and I think Sony too was probably like, hey, you're spending too much time with Xbox, man. You got to come back here. Yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, he'll <laughs> maybe he'll be spending less time with Xbox after... Our, uh, the news we got uh, coming up but um but yeah so that was uh on overall loved the state of play really excited about it you know again it, i didn't feel like we got a ton of new stuff to look forward to in 2024 like but but it is a state of play though like you know they, yeah. they made a differentiation between state of play and the playstation showcase but like that's where like yo you're getting you know these yeah here's these, the game you're gonna coming. really like lose your mind over yeah yeah and I'm, I'm interested to see that but like right right now you know obviously we've got rebirth coming out we've got a handful of titles that i'm looking forward to but um maybe the next showcase will help kind of fill out the back end of 2024 as we're headed into um 2025 which will have you know gta 6 and all that other good stuff too so um okay yeah, so that was the state of play. Uh, and then shortly after the state of play, uh, we began to see some buzz around um, the uh, a handheld. So this is from Insider Gaming uh, from a few days ago. So Sony has a new PlayStation handheld console in development. Uh, and it starts, uh, Sony may finally be set to rejoin the traditional handheld gaming market with a new PlayStation handheld console. Uh, according to a known hardware leaker, uh, Moore's Law is Dead, a non-streaming console is in the works at Sony that would natively support and play games. Uh, in the report, uh, it said that the device will have a custom AMD APU that is currently in the high-level design phase and that it's at least two years out and technically not greenlit for a launch yet. Um, it's also mentioned that based on talking with developers, the new handheld could maintain native backward compatibility with PlayStation 4 games while receiving a pro-like patch for PS5 titles. Uh, the report states that the device is still in early development, so things are likely to change, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, uh, yeah, this kind of got around and, and people started chatting a bit about, you know, what could be in terms of uh, Sony's next handheld after the the success of the, the PlayStation Portal. Uh, I don't know, Alan, do you, do you think there's room on the market for a, a, a proper Sony handheld? Do you think that people are ready? Oh, yeah, they've got to be in a fan base that they were like, if they said, hey, this is going to be, you know, the full-fledged machine. It's not going to be, you know, the portal where you kind of just stream to your couch. You've got your whole PlayStation library, everything from PlayStation Premium through Plus, Extra, and all that other stuff. You can play it on the go. For me, though, the confusing part is sort of waiting until the PS6 to kind of, like, launch along with it. Um, because from my point of view, like, the hardware we have now and the stuff that AMD makes right now in terms of their uh, APUs, like the stuff that you see in the Steam Deck, uh, the the one from, um, uh, I think it's uh, Asus. The ROG Ally? Asus? ROG Ally? Yeah, the ROG Ally. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. those can play games that are pretty close to PS4 level. So I don't know, like, what's the holdup? Why, why would they want to wait two years? Is it to get it low on cost? Do they think that the battery life is not good enough? But I just feel like, that's the part that's throwing me for the loop of like, why are we waiting on this? You yeah. can easily put this handheld out this year and the hardware that AMD makes for these portables, like they can play PS4 style games pretty well. So 
uh, that that's the part that kind of like makes me doubt this a little bit that they are planning to do uh, a handheld um but i definitely think that there's space for it obviously like when you see the success that steam deck and the rug ally uh the io neo uh set of handhelds like you know a playstation branded you know with access to someone's full library of playstation digital digital playstation games i think that would get people really excited like the the market is is hot for it right now yeah i i think the two year i mean like the time to develop it i you know i think the the portal was sort of like a proof of concept i think sony was interested in seeing you know what you know what kind of base they could get with just like an extension right like a, a basically a remote play elevated device and you know it's still selling like hotcakes it's still extremely hard to get um and so i think they're seeing that response and they're like hey, okay you know what like we we're seeing the steam deck on the market we're seeing the rug ally we're seeing this sort of evolution of of handheld gaming again and now now is a good time for us to to get back into it and get into it properly and I just don't know if, I mean, I think the reason why it would take a couple of years to do it is really a combination of all the things that you're talking about, right? Like, you know, they need to make sure the battery life will be able to perform. Maybe they want to try and get an affordable OLED in there. You know, they want to make sure it's at the right price point, you know, all those things. And, um, and that's what's going to take that extra time, you know? So I, I think, I'm I'm really interested, you know, I was I was listening to kind of funny uh, earlier and Tim was talking about this and about how, you know, handheld gaming has sort of like gone on this cycle where, you know, it's really making a resurgence because not because we can play like certain handheld titles that are only on that handheld because I don't think that's how this new system will be. I don't think they're going to make like a, you know, PlayStation Portable 3 or whatever, and they're not going to make titles for the PlayStation Portable 3, but instead being able to play your PlayStation 6 titles on that device or PlayStation 5 titles on that device or whatever, that's the dream, right? That's what we couldn't possibly think about being able to do before, like being able to take our console with us and play it on that small screen. And now it's now it's more realistic. Um, so really interested to see I mean, I love my PSP. I love my Vita. <laughs> I kind of like the idea of like a unique handheld ecosystem uh, that has its own titles because it's, you know, developed for that hardware specifically or that, you know, control scheme specifically or whatever. But I think ultimately that's what the, the device really is going to to be. That's what it's going to be for is to give you that full console experience on the go. I don't know. I'm still doubtful. I'm, I'm a little bit doubtful. I just feel like, I know they said that, you know, you think that the portal was sort of like a test phase, a feeler's phase, but like the market's already there. The market is spoken. The Steam Deck sells like crazy. Rog Ally sells well. Uh, MSI is coming, well, coming out with one called the Claw that uses an Intel chip. Like, mm -hmm. it's yeah. there. You just strike now because in two years, you don't know, maybe the, the, the whole portable gaming thing is kind of done with or it's still around, but not as popular as, popular as it is now. Yeah, or the or the or the Steam Deck has like cornered the market and stuff. Because I mean, there's threads abound on how to use your Steam to do your remote play and everything. And so, if the Steam Deck can do it already, and they've been in the market for years, you know, how's Sony going to corner that? So, yeah, I, yeah. No, I, I hear what you're saying. Um, I'm. I, that's what makes me curious about the strategy, right? That's what makes me curious to say to see what is it about whatever this new handheld Sony hardware that. You know, makes the compelling case to you know for you to like get that instead of um you know using a steam deck or whatever so and i know that we didn't really have this like on the docket but just kind of a quick little aside yeah, that, yeah, uh, yeah. apparently uh, phil spencer liked a tweet of someone talking about a possible xbox handheld so that's kind of making some of the rounds on <laughs> social media just kind of chucking that out yeah. there <laughs> interesting interesting all right. Well, while we're talking about Phil and Xbox, uh, that'll take us into our final, our last story, which is sort of all the stories, uh, which is Xbox signaling a major shift in strategy with first party titles coming to other platforms. So um, this sort of started uh, with uh, an article from Xbox era. Um, 
yesterday uh, that Microsoft plans a Starfield launch for PlayStation 5. So this is from John Clark at Xbox Era. For many weeks now, rumors have persisted regarding Microsoft's intentions to release a number of first-party games, namely Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves on rival platforms. According to our sources, who have asked to remain anonymous because they were not authorized to talk about company plans, that list of games also includes Bethesda's game studio Starfield. Starfield released back in August 2023 to fairly positive reception and was the biggest Bethesda game of all time, surpassing 6 million players within the week of release. Now it looks as though Microsoft is planning on bringing Bethesda's newest RPG universe to an entirely new platform, the PlayStation 5. Um, so that got some, you know, buzz and conversation happening over the And then the, the floodgates opened. And the floodgates opened. And then, then the Verge, Microsoft Ways launching Indiana Jones on the PS5 from Tom Warren. Bethesda's upcoming Indiana Jones game is also tentatively set to launch on the Sony's, Sony's PlayStation 5 console. We got our first glimpse of Indiana Jones in the Great Circle during Microsoft's Xbox Developer Direct event last month, where it was announced for Xbox and PC. A source familiar with Microsoft's plans tell The Verge that Bethesda is also considering bringing it to the PS5. Um, And then we also had a story about Microsoft reportedly bringing Gears of War to the PlayStation from BGC. Um, And so this was from... uh, uh, Tom Ivan at VGC. Um, Microsoft is reportedly considering considering bringing the Gears of War franchise to PlayStation. That's according to Giant Bomb's Jeff Grubb, who is elaborating on recent claims that Microsoft is working on a new initiative to release more Xbox exclusive games on other platforms. Um, you know, the other the other one that I've heard it's definitely under consideration. It doesn't mean that it's going to happen, but it's in talks. Is Gears of War? Grubb said on Monday. Um, And then there was a conversation about Halo potentially coming to PS5. So in the midst of all of this talk... um, Yeah, yeah. And uh, before you kind of go on, I also want to like remind people that last week, I think we brought up the fact that Hi-Fi Rush and Sea of Thieves was already also, you know, being spoken about about heading over to Nintendo and Sony. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, And... So that was happening, and well, that all was happening, and there's all this like buzz and talk uh, from uh, you know on Twitter and everything else. And then a few hours ago uh, on Twitter, Phil Spencer tweeted, "We're listening and we hear you. We've been planning a business update event for next week, where we look forward to sharing more details with you about our vision for the future of Xbox. Stay tuned." So it's going to be, I think Gene Park said, <laughs> it's going to be a long week for Xbox fans. Um, and you know we we talked about this a little bit before i i'm for this only reiterates kind of uh, you know solidifies my position that xbox is focusing on being a software company i think um that they are not going to stay in the traditional console you know war as as long you know for much longer i think the leaks about the uh, about the console future that they have with cloud-based console, et cetera, et cetera. Co- everything sort of points to them focusing more on, you know, bringing, bringing first party titles, maybe to Xbox and game pass first, but only briefly before then distributing it to the other consoles, because, you know, their public strategy now is to get their games on as many screens as possible. Right. And so that's, I think that's a big part of this strategy. So I don't know, Alan, what, as these stories have been coming out, what, what are your thoughts? So obviously we spoke last week a bit of Hi-Fi Rush and see if these are like, it kind of makes sense. You know, those are like, see if these live service game, like you can't limit yourself. Like they don't make money that way in terms of like your install base. You got to like, let them go and be wherever they need to be. Hi-Fi Rush had like, Nintendo Switch vibes written all over it, and they put Ori on the Switch before, so, like, makes perfect sense. As the news first broke of Starfield, I kind of thought, like, I mean, it kind of makes sense, because if you go back to those initial reports, they were like, yeah, we're working on an Xbox, and this is Bethesda, um, like, we're working on an Xbox and a PS5 version, and, like, you know, there are questions, like, you know, is it going to be exclusive? And so they're in a lot of pressure of, like, is this going to be exclusive or not? And I yeah. feel like they shot themselves in the foot by saying yes. I think that the plan all along was like, hey, they've already put in all this dev work into the PS5 version. 
so like obviously we're just gonna we're gonna we're gonna make use of it you know that's a waste of resources to to go and do that version and then just go like nah we're not gonna release it i think they would have been better off saying you're gonna get it you know first on xbox and then at some point in the future it'll head over to the ps5 and i think this would not have been the bomb that it was yesterday and same for indiana jones because i mean like they spent seven and a half billion on bethesda 69 billion on activision blizzard like no. shareholders on like turns fast, yeah. right? They're not patient. Yeah. They don't care about the long game. They want that next quarter to be profitable. So it only makes sense that like, yo, we can't, especially these like uh, studios that were acquired. They're not even like traditionally first party studios. We got to make money on these. But now that, so now that this is kind of out there, you know, you get the Gears of War, you get Halo's going to PlayStation, you know, all these crazy. So now I don't know which ones are yeah. true, which ones are not. Because, like, again, in my mind, business wise, it makes sense to to make use of like the work that they put in towards that PS5 version of Starfield and of Indiana Jones. It's like a big, you know, well, I don't know if it's like a big cultural thing anymore, Indiana Jones, but like it's got a big fan no. base. Like, it, it I mean, it's got so a fan well base. On. Yeah. I mean, they, they got, he's got to ride to Disneyland, all the good stuff, right? So, I mean, I think. Yeah. So, it, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it makes sense again, but like, I don't know if they'll go to the extreme of like giving up those like, core xbox you know like that's part of our identity halo forza um and all of this talk about them you know becoming a third-party publisher and they're going to be software only i think kind of also like i don't know how that would work because the only way game pass makes sense is again as, as your only strategy like we don't have hardware anymore is if you can have it on as like you said as many screens as possible but i Sony's not going to let them on there. Nintendo's not going to let them on there. Sony has its own service called PlayStation, you know, Extra and Premium. Nintendo has a family uh, service online and the, their own software to sell. So you're you're going to get locked out, locked out of those. So then all you have is what PC and then people on their Samsung TVs. Like that doesn't make any sense either. To like, to me, you need Xbox. You need people who are like in the ecosystem who are all about Xbox and are willing to put down that. 10 to 20 bucks a month depending on whether you're on uh like you know standard game pass or on game pass ultimate and yeah yeah i just i i i don't know how they can make that work without like their own hard like i know it's not making them a ton of money but i still think it's a really bad idea to just kind of go like yeah we're third party now and we're just going to count on you know people streaming to their tvs or whatever yeah i don't know it's so interesting to me. Like, imagine a future where Game Pass has an app on the PlayStation. Like, it's not going to happen. I, I mean, just, well, just I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. It, it, I mean, it's like Apple, right? Like, we talked about how Apple is going to have, you know, they're going to be offering the game streaming services and stuff now too, right? And so, yeah, like, but like, because they were forced to, they were literally like, you know, through the Digital Markets Act of Europe, they were for, yeah. and only in, in. uh uh, because of that is that the only reason we're getting that, you know, going I know, but I'm just, I'm just, I mean, they can, they could potentially exist simultaneously. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I do not see a future where Xbox continues to focus on consoles. I just don't. I just don't think that they are going to, because there have been, su- there has been such a, um, a consistent theme and trend and conversation and discourse around why do I need an Xbox? I have a PC, you know, like I have game pass on my my PC. What am I doing? You know, like that is sort of like, it's, it's really cannibalizing. I think a lot of the folks who otherwise would be getting an Xbox. And if, if Microsoft is going to, if they are actually confirming that they're bringing these titles to the PlayStation and you know, have execs out there saying like, we want to put, the game on as many screens as possible, then that's exactly, you know, that's what they're going to do. They're going to, they're going to utilize, they're going to take partnerships. They're going to go to Sony and Sony's going to take their cut or whoever is They're going to, you know, you know, work with is going to take their cut, but they're still going to get the lion's share and getting 70% out of millions and millions of sales is better than getting a hundred percent of hundreds of thousands. Right. So like, yeah, that's, yeah. I, I, I still yeah. think you can have both, though. I don't think you should completely jettison the hardware. I think the viable yeah. path forward for yeah. them is to have 
like a custom high end box, like a, a custom high end Xbox, basically. Like I'm talking eight hundred, nine hundred, like running with PCs, but it's custom made just to play games. Because there's a lot of people out there who don't want to play games on their PC. You know, to them, it's like a completely separate thing. They don't have to worry about upgrading the processor, the memory, sure. the graphics sure. card. They don't want to spend seven hundred dollars on an RTX forty seventy or a thousand dollars on a forty eighty. So, like, there's still to me, there's a space to deliver that nice high-end experience to that gamer who doesn't want to play it on pc wants the simplicity of the console but still wants it local like they don't they they also care about uh you know uh lag they care you know they don't have a, a great internet connection uh you know they're playing first person shooters very competitively uh, or any other kind of competitive game that it, like game streaming just doesn't lend itself that well to it mm -hmm. and i think that that's the path forward and uh, an acknowledgement of we're going to have a small base we're not running for first or even second anymore. We just at least want a foothold still in the console space of having hardware out there that people yeah. can attach themselves to, that people will gladly pay for like Game Pass Ultimate to be able to get like the best experience. Cause like, yo, they're talking about putting ads in Game Pass now. Like that's nuts. Yeah. I I think I actually think there's a better chance that the box that they make is not actually the high end box but the budget box, right? Like, I, I agree with you. I, I Like I the think, Roku stick type. The like the Roku stick or, or, you know, the Xbox Series S, right? Like, I think that there's going to be, uh, you know, and, and I maybe I was a bit, uh, what's the word, bold, right? Like, not, not that they don't have a future in hardware, but that they certainly would shift away from making that a focus because, like, especially on a high-end box, right? Like, they're not going to be, they're going to be losing money on hardware, right? Or, or at least not making much of a margin versus if they focus on something that's a bit more low to mid tier, something that's still in the realm of like what somebody would pay for a console to be able to say, Hey, you know what? Don't worry about your PC, right? Like, don't worry about putting in that $600 graphics card. Here's a $400, $500 box for you. You know, it'll be able to play all the games that you want to play for years and years. Um, you have access to game pass, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and, and yeah, so I, I can see that, but I do think that the Game Pass strategy and the first party sort of distribution strategy is really the way that they're headed. I think that they, um, you know, like we were talking about, you know, it sounds ludicrous still, and I and I, I highly doubt it's going to happen. But, you know, we're talking about like Game Pass being on PlayStation, right? And like, why, you know what, that will never happen. But it's like, you know, there's been a lot of talk about digital games and streaming services, right? Like. Netflix exists alongside Amazon Prime, alongside Hulu, alongside Disney Plus, right? And so, like, they, and they all operate, you know, kind of within the same general ecosystem. And so I'm just wondering if, you know, if we're moving towards a digital future, which I'm not super stoked about because I love physical games, <laughs> but, you know, or it's like, oh, yeah. yeah Xbox like, is going all digital. Like, they already, like, yeah, can yeah they're already the in. Team. They can't. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I can just imagine where it's like, yeah, like, why wouldn't, you know, why that really like Sony's thinking like, what's the difference if we have game pass be able to be loaded on our PS five versus on our TVs? Like, <laughs> you know, like what's it like there, there's like a bar barely a difference between those two things. And that, you know, game pass and Xbox would have titles that would be exclusive to their platform uh, or to their streaming service for six months or a year, or whatever that you know, time frame is. And PlayStation would have their own thing on PS plus and the first party games that they're developing. Like there's still the, the draw of the, the software and like the benefits that those bring, but they don't necessarily have to go to their respective hardware corners. You see what I'm saying? Like, that's kind of what I'm thinking is like, they don't, I can, Im I can imagine a future where, you know, you can do that <laughs> because the services ultimately will become very similar. They're just going to offer, you know, unique, uh, unique software for each platform. Yeah. It's just for me, it's hard to see them like, Oh, we're only going to offer like an S series S type console. Like, they were already on the struggle bus with Baldur's Gate three, and that's yeah. bad for the brand. Well, that's bad for for them. Yeah, uh, you know that that feels that 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 feels like very Nintendo GameCube era where like. Well, well, I mean, I, 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 you know, the the Series S. I, I think again, if we shoot for like a four hundred five hundred dollar box instead, like I think that can solve that problem, right? Because I think the X is right around that that price point. So like, um, yeah, but like the know, X is like on the is super struggling, even though they like. Uh, they were talking about how one of the reasons that they decided that their 
gonna go in this direction is because they're very disappointed with the uh sales of the x even though they got mm-hmm. this kind of the 349.99 yeah that's why i think like they gotta go high end instead of yeah. the low end uh, at the very yeah. least maybe have like like you said have that low end but then also instead of kind of going sort of mid-range go all the way like this is the differentiator this is why you yeah. want this versus the playstation 5 you can get the basic model or you can get the deluxe model like that's exactly it. There's, no, can, there's no middle you mode. can get yeah. the the the, uh, the sedan or you can get the ferrari which one do you want <laughs> yeah exactly They're like i like my civic um cool cool yeah i mean it's a very interesting time Like, it's a super interesting time, honestly, to be following games because, you know, like I said, console wars, you know, they've they've been around forever. Um, And, you know, the the the, you know, the race really kind of heated up um, in the early 2000s and everything. And, you know, but Phil Spencer has admitted like Xbox lost the war when it mattered the most when people were building their digital collections. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like. He, they, they know they lost out. And so how do they now pivot? How do they reposition themselves to capture the market? And, you know, I'm really interested to see this business update because I will guarantee you that there are going to be a lot of pissed off gamers next week. <laughs> um, like, well, the thing is that what's nuts is that they're waiting to next week. Like, yeah. surely you already kind of had an idea. There's been lots of talks. Because uh, apparently, like, again... Like, who knows what's actually going on? But, like, the thing is that people inside Team Xbox, like, it's not really their call to make. It's more Satya Nadella, the CEO of, like, Microsoft, who's making Right. He, Phil's got to talk to Satya about it, right? Like, and be like, is yeah, this, but, <laughs> is this but cool, boss? That, <laughs> but not only that, but, like, I think that the people who are running the Xbox division, you know, itself, because it, it's kind of its own thing, a part of Microsoft, but, like, kind of its own thing. Um, but like that they leaked this stuff on purpose to kind of like cut Satya Nadella at the knees to be like, yo, this is a horrible idea. We don't want to do this. And yeah. you get such a huge backlash, so you got to back off. So that'll be interesting to see how this business update works out. It's kind of crazy that they're even waiting to next week. I thought they would like be on it by like tomorrow or Wednesday because like, you know, the big no way. I, Xbox I think influencers yeah. have turned on them. Like yeah. they are setting the store on fire. Like, yeah. you know, you got to show up with the fire department to put it out somehow. Like, you're just going to let it burn for a week. And it's it's been bad, dude. It's been, like, really weird seeing some of these dudes freak out about it. Yeah, it. I I think that the time, I mean, honestly, I think the time, the timing is about, like, the push and pull. Like, you know, they're Microsoft. They want to keep an eye on the PR. They want to make sure that the messaging is correct. And, like, if you're talking, like, like you're talking about if there is a sort of like high level struggle, like power struggle between like Phil and Satya or whatever, um, or there's disagreements among like the executive leadership team, that's something that's going to be playing out very messily behind (laughs) closed doors. Like I would love to be a fly on the wall in those conversations. But like, I think that's part of the reason why he's like, Hey, we'll have a business update next week. They need that time. They need that time to iron out what they're going to be presenting on who's presenting it, you know, like who's going to fall on the sword you know, for, for this decision or that decision, like, I think they need the time to figure it out. Um, but yeah, it's, I don't know if they got to do They got the, the, the whole community just completely turned on them. Like it's insane. Cause like, you know, they, they foster the whole uncle Phil personality and, uh, and in a way that like Nintendo and Sony just don't <laughs> like, they're yeah. very much corporations. Like, yes, they're yes. like, you know, like we sell you, you buy it shut up and get out of my face yeah except for i mean nintendo had reggie for a while right like nintendo had a bit more of he he was more more personable but like still like compared to like what xbox has been doing recently it's it's very different and like they've really turned on him it's uh it's kind of wild on 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 the socials there so i'm just wondering though like i think the more you let this fester the more it gives space to throw out crazy rumors you know you're scaring off people from possibly buying one because they like, they have been sort of kind of on sale a little bit at different yeah. retailers you know like if someone sees this like oh i should buy an xbox right now it's like you don't want yeah. that either so well i, I mean, think it would have been yeah. you know good to kind of try to like i get what you're saying of like we need time to figure this out real, but like you get paid a lot of money you guys can work a little over time to figure it out and get it out by wednesday yeah maybe i i don't know it's i mean as somebody who works in some in in corporate america like not not like high level but like high enough level that yes it takes time (laughs) 
<laughs> like it could take time for this sort of thing. But um, I'm I'm really interested to see. You know, definitely I'm seeing that buzz on on uh, online and and just sort of the the anger that Xbox fans are having towards Phil towards all of these decisions because you know when you spend five hundred dollars on a console, right? Like you, that's not money that that the majority of Americans can just like throw away, right? Like that's an investment. And so you want to feel like you're getting your money's worth for that investment when you could have spent that money instead on, you know, a PS5, for example, you know? And so I totally get like, you know, the, some the, the frustration, the anger. Um, and I think we'll, we'll have, we'll wait until next week. In the meantime, they're going to let Rome burn. But I also think that, you know, in the age of the internet, our collective memories and subconscious, like it's crap. Like, <laughs> I think two to three months from now, like, yeah, people will be talking about whatever strategy gets announced next week, but nobody's going to remember how pissed off we all were for a week in February. Like, I think, I think it will, you know, we will survive. Um, and I think Xbox, I think it, I, I think it depends that. how the, that announcement goes. Yeah. Yeah. We, that's we, fair. We still don't know what's going to be in there. If yeah. they're like, if they're doing what I think they're doing of like, Hey, we're just trying to make the most out of like those acquisitions. And you know you can that we still will have you know like exclusives to Xbox. Then I think it will come down. Uh, but if they're like, "Yo, I hope you bought a Series X if you wanted one." We're not selling those after like July. Yeah, right. <laughs> we're all the party. Get <laughs> Game Pass <laughs> Ultimate. Get your get that Samsung TV set up on the wall. Get ready to game on the cloud. Right, exactly. It's like it's like the ET pit all over again. They're like, we're gonna bury all these Xboxes wild, in the dude. desert. <laughs> Gosh, oh man. Anyway, I'm super interested. I'm, I'm, I'll definitely be tuning in for that business update to see what what Phil and the crew have to say. Yeah, um, that, and the thing is that like, they probably won't be able to do it before we do our podcast, which sucks. That'd be nice to talk about. Like, well, maybe fresh. we'll just have to do a bonus episode. Um, here we go first bonus <laughs> first bonus episode we will discuss xbox's business plans uh shortly after they're announced uh we'll 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 target getting that out next week um following the following the announcement um all right that's really it uh, the last thing i did want to uh, call out here um is that jason Trier announced today that his new book play nice uh, it's going to be out in October, I believe. Uh, it's going to be featuring the history of Blizzard. Um, so uh, including the uh, acquisition of Activision, uh, all the way up through the recent departure of Mikey Barra and all the other craziness that's going on. He said he's literally rewriting the ending of the book right now because it's just crazy. Um, he has written two amazing books uh, already, if you haven't read them, uh, Blood, Sweat, and Pixels, and Press Reset. Uh, they're both uh, really good reads on the gaming industry, how games are made, how industry professionals are impacted by layoffs, et cetera, et cetera. So if you haven't read them before, definitely check them out. Uh, and I am personally looking forward to it. So uh, you can pre-order it on Amazon or find it online. And no, Jason Schreier isn't giving me any sort of money or anything for this. I just thought you all should know if you enjoy gaming news and you know reading gaming nonfiction stuff um there are a few that do it as well as mr schreier does so uh we do have a deal we ah deals deal. corner let's hear it yes yes so uh this is for new subscribers only if you've been thinking about jumping on playstation extra or premium they are discounted uh, i don't recommend premium i don't think you get enough for to justify that price tag but for playstation extra you can get 12 months for basically 80 dollars for the year uh, and that is lower than they did during Black Friday. Black Friday went down to ninety nine ninety nine, and right now it's like seventy nine uh, eighty seven or something like that. Oh wow! So and that works out to about six dollars and like seventy cents a month. Um, uh, so if you can afford to put down like the full, you know, one chunk payment of seventy nine sixty whatever it was, uh, I think it's worth it at that price point because there's a lot of stuff in the in the catalog there, like Ghost of Tsushima, uh, Spider Man Miles Morales uh demon souls lots of really good titles in there that death stranding is in there too i think death, death stranding is in there yeah. yep yep so uh to me that's a that's a at that price point it's totally worth to check it out if you haven't tried it before yeah awesome thanks for the shout out uh well that's all that we have for this wonderful tuesday until next time i'm jeremy i'm alan keep gaming everyone see ya <laughs>